The last 10% is the 90%. If you're going to ask to anyone who ever worked on a project, this is what they're going to tell you. That the 10% when the project seems that it's over is going to be the real struggle. And that happened to my project as well. I soon realized that the last part of the game actually, it was taking me so much time because I had an idea and a vision about my game and to reach that idea and vision, to make something that I was happy with, it required a lot of time and effort actually. Hi guys, good day to you, welcome to this new vlog. I'm Andy from Yellowhead Games and this is Finish and Publish. Okay, my game is already out, so please go and check it, because it's not doing that great and this might be a topic for a next video, but I really need some players on Android and why not rate and comment the game on, on the Android store. We're going to start with a few problems that I had on achieving what I needed to achieve. I added some new mechanics and when I started to work on mechanics, they kind of evolved by themselves because, you know, when you start thinking what mechanics you can put to make puzzles, actually you find new ideas each time and obviously I wrote those ideas down on the pipeline but not all of them in the final project. The way I was introducing new mechanics was that you finish one mondo, one world, and then in the last level of this world, you actually have a new mechanic. You introduce it with an easy puzzle, so the player kinda understands what is happening, and then the first two levels maybe of the new world actually are quite easy just to make sure that the player gets confident with the new mechanic. Now, the first mechanic that I introduced was actually two blocks that move together in couple. Basically, if you move one block, the other one is going to react to the position of the first one, to the movement of the first one. And that's great, and it's the basic level of this mechanic. And I created a system of a parent and a child, where one block is going to be considered the parent, the other one is going to be the child. So the child is going to react to the parent. And this can be interchangeable, because if we move the child, basically, the parent is going to react to the child position as well. So basically, they're both parents. Now, the second level of complexity is given by the fact that my blocks can have a different position on the start of the level. And since the movement of the child is based basically on the position of the parent, this kind of created some bugs and glitchy movements, kind of teleporting the block to the position of the parent. For example, if I had a parent that started on the 0x coordinate and I had a child that started on the 50x coordinate, when I click on the parent, the child is going to jump to the 0 coordinate to emulate the position of the parent. And that was not what I was looking for. I wanted that the child basically parallel the movement that he had to make starting from that position. When you explain it like this, it looks easy, but actually making math for, for that was kinda a nightmare because I'm not good on math. And still now the mechanic pr presents some bugs because 99% of the time it works, but there is 1% that it fails. So you can see that the child block is a few pixels off from the end, basically, from the position of the parent. I'm not able to fix that. The third level of complexity is given by inverting the movement, basically having different dimensions and inverted movement. I created that as well. And the fourth level of complexity of this mechanic, basically, was that the parent can move the child, but the child cannot move the parent. Anyway, this was the first mechanic. A thing that I needed to make sure was that actually the player understood what was happening, which block was connected with which. And that's why I came with the idea to give these blocks the same random color, basically. While for the mechanic that the parent moves the child and the child doesn't move the parent, I came with the idea that the child could have a bulb. The color of this light is going to be the same of the parent. And honestly, I had some feedback from the players. Not every player actually understood that the blocks with the same color basically are connected. I totally know that if I relied more on, on heavy text tutorials, basically, it would be so much easier for the player to understand it. I, I wanted kind of the player to have, you know, to play the game and understand it by itself. And hopefully I did a good job, but you know, now, another mechanic that I introduced was actually to move the ball shooter, the container that had the balls. And it was an easy task, since I had some experience now to make things move together. But what happened actually was that 
I had some physical objects inside the bulb here. And if you want to move physical objects, actually, you have to make sure that you're applying impulse and not moving them like you move a traditional node D by, by adding some values to the X position, basically. If you do it like that, they're going to act weird. <laughs> So I had to give up on those and I came with the solution that the first time that they collide between them, they just create a sprite on their position and they just delete their self. And another thing that was important was obviously to make sure that the player understood which was the node that is going to move this ball shooter. And that came basically with the fact that I had a new type of box that could move the ball shooter, basically. And this was the basic level of complexity of this object. Now, the second level of complexity is given by the fact that I introduced some keys. Basically, to activate the movement of this ball shooter, you had to activate another node that was a key. This key was represented by two parts that were separated. Each time you join together these two parts, they activate this block and you can move the ball shooter. The activation was represented with a light that was glowing inside the block that came very cool this gave me the ability to have a new set of puzzles based on the fact that the key itself was actually a physical object and that the slimes could collide with and, and bounce upon it and last but not least i introduced a new gameplay element and this is the last mechanic that i introduced in the game if slimes touch the lava basically they just get roasted <laughs> And I think I made a decent work with particles and making them burn when they touch the lava. And that was quite funny. Now, how I made the lava, basically, I'm using the lines, and I'm using a raycast, and I'm using a shader. And I think I'm going to do a tutorial about this. And an interesting point that I wanted to have is that the lava could be stopped by blocks. And that's why I used raycast, basically. Thanks to the raycast, basically, I get the length of the lava. We are on the last part of the game dev, and this is very important. This is the fine tuning, basically. A thing that I really wanted in my game was actually to have pages to give some feedback to the player for their actions. So obviously there are a few pages that are very easy to achieve and other ones that are hidden, but that was part of the game actually. Last but not least, I needed to make sure that all the sounds and all the music was matching the game. Now there was nothing wrong with the, with the first arrangement of my main theme, but I didn't like it that much on the menu because I think that it was kind of very dynamic and very up on the BBM. And I think that the player that is going to play this game will feel kind of a pressure, like the game was really hard. So I needed to make sure that the theme was actually something relaxing. And I was quite surprised that the chords that I used and the jingle that I used was actually pretty good. And it was quite easy to make a more relaxing version of it. And I really enjoy and love this new version. And hopefully people is going to love it as well. Okay guys, this was like the game was when I started making it. And this is how it looks now. The menu looks pretty good. And definitely there are some improvements here. I have a different scenario for each world basically. And I have a page for the pages. And the player is going to unlock them when he performs some types of actions that I thought. And the music is so cool now. It's relaxing. And each world has its own identity because it has its own mechanics. And that's cool. Guys, if you want, you can play the game right now on Android. Leave a comment there and please rate the game so you can help the game to keep it alive. I was thinking to make a long tutorial that explains how to make a game like Slime and Sliders from start to finish. If you are interested in that, please let me know down in the comment section. Leave a like and subscribe to the channel. This helps me a lot. Don't forget to turn on the bell notification to not lose any of my future videos. And more important, Keep devin' games!